Hi friends. Now we are going to discuss about uh, convolutional codes. So uh, before starting convolutional code, I just want to give you a small introduction to block coding. In block coding, the encoder accepts k bit message block and generate n bit code word. Thus, the code word are produced on block by block basis. Here, buffer is required, that is, memory is required to store a block of data. But there are some certain applications where the message bits come serially rather than large block. In this particular case, we have we need to go for convolutional coding is preferred. In convolutional code generate code using model to additions like uh, what we discussed in block codes. When you are discussing about convolution encoder, the rate of the encoder must be very important. Here rate of the encoder is defined as 1 by n bits per simple. Okay. So we need to define what is convolution encoder. Convolution and convolutional code encoder is a finite state machine that consists of M stage shift register with prescribed connection to N modulo 2 adders and multiplexer that serialize the output of the adder. So this is the definition of a convolutional encoder. For example, an L bit message sequence produces a code coded output sequence of length n into L plus m bit, then the code rate is given by R is equal to L divided by n into L plus m. If you are assuming L is greater than m, then the code rate is approximately equal to 1 by n bits per sim simple. It means each and every bit will be encoded into n bits. For example, if you are considering n is equal to 2, then each and every bit will be converted into 2 bits, encoded into 2 bits. If you are increasing the value of n, then we need to in bandwidth. With respect to convolution encoder, we need to know constraint length of convolution code is expressed in terms of message bits, is defined as number of shift over which a single message bit can influence the encoder output. So serially input bits will be coming when it, in a, it enters into uh, shift registers and it will make some changes and the constraint length is mainly used to make the shift register in content to zero. Okay, So constraint length purely depends upon number of shift register. For example, if the shift number of shift register is equal to is m then the constraint length k is equal to m plus 1. <coughs> m plus that means m plus 1 shift are required for a message bit to enter the shift register and finally it will come out. Okay, For example, if you, if you are considering number of shift register m is equal to 2, then constraint length is 3. For example, you take this encoder structure it consists of two flip-flop okay two flip-flop and uh, uh, all uh, these flip-flops flip -flops are connected using uh, model to order and serial input is given here serial input is given here and uh, uh, that outputs are taken as different stages of uh, different stages that is before flip-flop after uh, the first flip-flop and second flip-flop and uh, the output will be take output will be taken here in this particular place here uh, each and every the rate of the encoder is 1 by 2 rate of the encoder is 1 by 2 um, that is 
n is equal to 2 and constraint length k is equal to 3 because number of strip reaches is 2 so k is equal to m plus 1 which is equal to 3 and the core rate is 1 by 2 now depends upon the uh, link link from the flip flop and with the uh, model to add us we can write generated matrix for example first you, you take path 1 you take path 1 here we have a model to adder this model mod, mod, model to adder output is determined from the link coming from uh, here that is uh, before the first flip flop after the first flip flop and after the second flip flop that is there is a link, bet link between model to adder and uh, the flip flop hence the generator matrix of the first model to adder is 1 plus t plus d square it means so before the first flip flop the value of d is that is d power 0 we have, we have to represent d power 0 after it is uh, d power 1 and after the second flip flop it is d power Two. Now we have to make the coefficient of d power 0, d power 1 and d power 2 by seeing by uh, by using the connection. If a connection is exist then the coefficient value is 1. If connection is not exist then the coefficient value is equal to 0. For example when you are taking path 1 there is a there, there, there will be a connection there is a connection between uh, model to adder and uh, uh, all all the stages of flip flop hence uh, coefficient of d naught is equal to 1 d power 1 is 1 and d square is equal to 1 at the same hence the generator matrix of the first path is g1 the first generator matrix g1 of d is equal to 1 plus d plus d square at the same time if you are taking path 2 it has connection before the first flip flop and after the second flip flop there is no connection uh, uh, after the first flip flop hence uh, coefficient of t power 0 is 1 and coefficient of t power 1 is equal to 0 and coefficient of d square is equal to 1 so the generated matrix of the second path is 1 plus d square now we are going to see uh, how uh, the output is determined Consider a message sequence 10011 and uh, we have uh, we have to write this message uh, sequence uh, in terms of polynomial. Here length of the message sequence is 5. So when you are starting uh, d power 0 then the la uh, final one is d power 4. So I am writing I'm by constraint. I'm going to write pol uh, polynomial for this particular uh, message sequence by considering this message sequence as coefficient of d. Uh, here I have 1, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. So first one is d power 0, second one is d power 1, d power 2, d power 3, d power 4. So first coefficient is 1 and we don't have any uh, I mean well, a coefficient of uh, d, d power 1 and d power 2 is equal to 0 so the value of d power 1 and d power 2 is equal to 0 and d power 3 1 and d power 4 uh, 1 hence the polynomial related to message sequence is 1 plus d cube plus d power 4 now by multiplying this message polynomial and uh, uh, first path polynomial we can easily find out the uh, code word of code word related to first path so we have first path uh, polynomial and the message polynomial we need to multiply and then we have to add the uh, after multiplication we add using molar to addition we will get 1 plus d plus d square plus d cube plus d power 6 you know what is molar to addition that is 1 plus 1, 1 modulo to addition 1 is equal to is 0 and if you are adding 1 plus 0 you will get 1.
1 plus 0 is equal to 1. So it's simple multiplication. You have to simply multiply and arrange the coefficient. And if you uh, if the uh, if the sum is odd number, then you will help you will uh, the coefficient will be 1 and even number then coefficient will be 0 that's it okay similarly you can determine uh, code uh, output of the second path by simply multiplying second generator polynomial second path generator polynomial and the message polynomial so g2 of d is 1 plus d square and uh, message polynomial is 1 plus dq plus d power 4 when you are multiplying and uh, adding using modular to addition you will get 1 plus d square plus d cube plus d power 4 plus d power 5 and d power 6 now polynomial related to the first uh, uh, first gen, uh, first path is here the co you have to take the coefficient uh, if uh, d power some n is present then you have to put coefficient is 1 and d power uh, d is not present then you have to put the coefficient 0 now we have 1 d power uh, d is there d square is there d cube is there but we don't have d power 4 and d power 5 so first uh, four coefficient is 1 and uh, fifth and sixth is equal to 0 and seventh one is 1 so 1 1 1 1 0 0 and then 1 similarly you have to write coefficient here when you are uh, taking second one d power 1 is equal to 0 because there is uh, d power 1 is not there others uh, other coefficients are available and the output of and then then the co code word of the uh, second generator polynomial generator second path is 1 0 1 1 1 1 1 now we have to couple these two code words okay so like this now we have generated a code word from the uh, first path and the second path we have to combine the first code word from the first path and the second path and we have to combine and it, we have to transmit via the channel so here uh, first code word is one one second code word is second bit second bit of first path and the second path that is one zero similarly the third fourth and fifth so this is the output of the convolution encoder i told you that a single bit is converted into two bits that is encoded into two bits so input uh, signal input sequence is one zero zero one one so for this particular that is one zero zero one one for this particular sequence the output is produced as one one okay one 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 zero one 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 zero one zero one 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 that is one two three four five six seven okay but actually we have given only five bits but extra two uh, encoder bit will come in order to make the subregister is equal to zero so this is the way the convolution encoder will work now this is actually related to polynomial but strictly speaking we need to know how it what is really happening inside the finite state machine for example um, here we have uh, two fill two sub bridges that is flip flop so we can assume that there will there may be four different state so the state and binary description is given in the table for example you consider a is 0 0 b is 1 1 0 c is 0 1 and d is 1 1 these are the state of the finite state machine okay this is the encoder so it means the shift register content may be 0 0 there is this is 0 it may be 0 
zero or one zero zero one and one one. These are the four different possible state of the encoder. Now we need to find out output of the encoder for different sequence. That is the sequence input sequence may be one or zero. So for example, you can we consider initially uh, the flip flop uh, values are zero zero. If one comes or zero comes, we are going to find out output of the encoder. Now, initially we are going to consider uh, initial value of the flip flop one and zero. Both are zero. Now a zero is coming. If a zero is coming, there will not be any change in the state of the uh, encoder because this zero never influences any value of the flip flop. So the uh, uh, the encoder remains in the same state, and the output will be. We are going to find out the output, and since all everything is zero, the output will be zero zero because zero zero because here for for the first path encoder value is encoder uh, first uh, modulo to adder input to the first modulo to adder is uh, we are going to take uh, input from here that is the before the first flip flip flop the value is zero second uh, first flip flop output is zero and third flip flop output is zero when you are uh, when you are uh, adding uh, these three bits using modulo to adder the output will be zero similarly uh, path two, here it's zero. That is first one is zero. Second one also zero. When you are taking modulo to addition of these two bits, you will get output. We are going to represent uh, the this particular uh, uh, state using state diagram. For example, uh, now at present, at present, the encoder is in zero zero state. That is A. Just can you come to uh, this diagram? The encoder is in the state A. Now, if zero comes, if zero comes, the output of the encoder is zero zero, and uh, you you have to uh, uh, you have to read this state diagram like the solid line, solid line represent, solid line represent when zero comes, and uh, dotted line represent when one comes so now we are talking about zero as input so there will not be any change in the state so uh, uh, the state of the state of the encoder is a a means it is in zero zero state when zero zero come the output of the encoder is zero zero and the encoder will remain in the same state so just represent like this the same state and output is zero zero so you have to mark like so the state of the encoder is zero zero the a state a is nothing but zero zero state and when zero comes there is no change in the state the encoder is remain in the same state by emitting the output zero zero so this is one case now if one comes if one comes now initially the state of the shift digits is zero zero if one comes what will happen is here uh, modulo to first path is one zero zero and second path is one zero so the output of the first path is one and the second path is one and uh, initially it is in zero zero state if because of one is input then it will move to so this one will store in this first flip flop and this this zero will come to the second flip flop hence so first flip flop is uh, will store one and it will be zero because of this one comes the encoder state will move to one zero from zero zero so the state of the the state of the encoder will be one zero one zero means 
the state we have represent is b okay now output is 1 1 now it is uh, we are going to represent the state diagram we are at this particular place if one comes if one comes one comes then what will happen we have to represent it as dotted line so i have represented using dotted line okay dotted line one comes it will move to the state one zero it will move to one zero by emitting the output one one okay now we are here we are here so the state mission of uh, uh, the uh, um, state of the uh, encoder is moved to one zero from zero zero now we are here if in this particular case in this particular case we are going to see the state of the encoder is one zero so there are two possible input the input may be zero or input may be one for example if you are considering the input is zero then here is zero one zero output is one and here it's zero here also zero output is output a second path is zero so output will be one zero so now the state of the encoder is one zero i am here if zero comes then the state of the encoder will move to move to if zero comes next state is so this zero will store in this first flip flop and one will come here it will move to zero one the next state is zero one zero one is here by emitting the output one zero so i am just representing b to c by by emitting one zero okay this is the way we can draw the state diagram for ex so we have not completed here zero case is uh, i have given zero case if one comes the state of the encoder is one zero if one comes here one one zero here one zero so output of the first path is one plus one plus zero the output will be zero here it's one so output is zero one and the next state is if the encoder will move to one one from the state one zero so this one will stored here and this one will come here so state is one one so now i am here the initial state is one zero if one com comes we have to represent dotted line output is zero one output is zero one and it will move to one one state one one state is zero so state is one one so it will move from one zero state to one one state by emitting output zero one so likewise we can easily write output and input of the encoder using state diagram so if you have state diagram it is very very simple to en uh, generate encoded bits so this is the state diagram for example if you really want to encode one zero zero one it is very simple to write encoded output so initially we have to start here because initial state is zero 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 okay now if one comes if one comes the output will be one one and it will move to this state here so for this one the output will be one one next it's zero so zero is represent here it will come here so it will move to 
0 1 state by emitting 1 0 1 0 so second uh, 1 0 third one is again 0 so we are here we are here now the, the input is 1 input is 1 then we have to come to input is 0 input is uh, 0 input is 0 then it will come to 0 0 state by emitting output 1 1 now again 1 so the last one is 1 1 so this is the way we can generate output of the encoder if you have state diagram so output of 1 0 0 1 is 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 now you can proceed like this because it's a serial um, input so you can even draw the state diagram something like this so by simply mention, mentioning a uh, state in the one side that is state of the uh, encoder a b c left hand side and right hand side by draw uh, by making dot uh, by making dot at two different points that is a and a now and uh, we need to uh, since it has a two shift register there are four state so four state and also four state in the right hand side now if zero comes you can draw a you can draw you can connect a and a because there will not be any change in the state of the encoder you can directly connect using a solid line and mark output of the en encoder 0 0 if one comes then definitely the encoder will move to the next uh, state that is 1 0 by emitting the output 1 1 okay and here we are taking the second state there are two possibilities if one comes so it will move from 1 0 to 1 0 to 0 1 by emitting the value 1 0 and if one comes if one comes if one comes the encoder move to the state 1 1 by emitting the value 0 1 so for each and every state there will be two input and two output so if you know this state diagram then you can easily find the encode encoder sequence so we can even uh, explain using trillis uh, diagram so if you have this idea this uh, if you have uh, uh, if you know how to draw uh, this state diagram okay then we can easily we can easily draw trellis diagram for this particular uh, encoder structure starting with uh, uh, starting with uh, uh, initial state a so there will not be any change in the output if all the input or is equal to 0 if input serial input is 0 then output will be is equal to 0 0 and the encoder will remain the same state if one comes after 0 then the encoder will move to 1 0 state by emitting the output 1 1 okay this is the first bit so second bit there are two possibility one it may be a 0 or 1 so if it is 1 it will move to second state okay and here there are two possible input maybe 1 or 0 if one if 0 comes it will move to the third state that is uh, 0 1 this is 1 0 this is 0 1 by emitting the value 1 0 if 1 comes then it will move to 1 1 state by emitting 0 1 likewise 
you can extend this trellis diagram so this trellis diagrams mainly used to uh, used for decoding purpose with this i am stopping my lecture possibly we will discuss about decoder later thank you